Welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. Don't you think about Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I am your host, Lori LeBay, and I am thrilled that you can join us today. We're going to have a fabulous conversation learning about a brand new memory care here in Centerville, Minnesota called Atlas Villas Memory Care. And um, I can't wait to introduce you to the founder and learn all the things that they are doing and how they structurally changed the building to meet the needs of, of their residents um, and their, their family members. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. But before I introduce you to our guest, uh, first, I want to welcome everyone. For those of you that are new, Alzheimer Speaks is about sound information, not just sound bites. We like to have real conversations with real people. You see, my mom lived with it for 30 years. So I get it. And my goal is to connect people to services, products, and tools, and to give hope and inspire people Um, to live well with this disease, because it is possible. And I know we don't hear that very often. But that is one of my personal missions. I also want to encourage you to visit our website, alzheimerspeaks.com, because we have over a decade of free content in all different types of formats. So you are definitely going to want to check that out. Also, on June 10th, I'm going to be out in Andover, Minnesota, if any of you are in that area. Uh, We're going to be doing a screening of A Timeless Love, thanks to the sponsorship of Arbor Oaks and Cedar Creek Senior Living and um, the YMCA of Andover. And it's actually going to be screened at the Y. And you can RSVP to them at 763-230-9622. What else do I want to tell you? Oh, check out our Betty the Bald Chicken book. If you've been struggling with how do you tell people about dementia? How do you walk through how it makes people feel? The book is not dementia specific. I mean, it can be used for bullying and all kinds of other things when we just don't feel like we fit in if it's a divorce or a death, but it gets people thinking about how they care. Um, Not so much a, a specific situation, but evaluating themselves and others around them and how they care for themselves as well. And again, it's written as a children's book. So it's great for kids, grandkids, schools, uh, libraries, that the whole nine yards there. Um, we've had wonderful, wonderful endorsements on the book and um, check it out. You can just go to again, alzheimerspeaks.com. Just go to our book tab. And then, of course, I need to mention Dementia Map, which is our global resource directory that has over 150 categories you can search, as well as calendar events and so much more. So let us hear from the Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner, and we will be right back, and I'll introduce you to our guest. I love the foot bar walker and let me tell you why. It is the option for my toolbox that I've been waiting for. Let's be honest, there are some clients who despite our best rehab efforts just aren't able to return to performing a sit to stand transfer on their own. Now I can offer my caregivers an easier, safer option that doesn't involve hoisting their loved one up from a sitting position. I don't recommend this walker for all of my clients, but I do recommend this walker for those caregivers looking for an easier, safer option with transfers. I would also encourage other therapists to add this walker to their toolbox. It's kind of like having my own mobile parallel bars for the client to pull up on. Whether it's a family caregiver at home helping a loved one with Parkinson's or dementia, CNAs in a long-term care facility assisting their patients, or therapists adapting to client and caregiver specific needs, we now have a very safe and effective option to offer in the Footbar Walker. Check this product out at thefootbarwalker.com. That's it for today from Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner. Have a great day and don't forget, if you can't do it, 
adapt it. Okay, it is time to introduce you to Amber Ganyan. She is a wife, a mom of five, a stepmom of two, and she and her husband, Rick, are the proud owners of Atlas Villas Memory Care, again, here in Centerville, Minnesota. I actually got to go out and, and um, get a tour, and I was just fascinated by, by the design and what they've done. So, you know, how, how did this happen to Amber and Rick? What, what pushed them, you know, in this mode? Well, like most of us, they've been touched by dementia. Amber's grandparents, Jack and Colleen Long, uh, both lived with dementia towards the end of their life. And they were kind of disappointed at what they saw out there. And so they did some research and decided to come up with uh, some other alternatives in terms of how we care and you know what a home looks like and why it should look that way. So we're going to learn about all these fascinating features. So let me pull Amber in. So Amber, I'm so excited to have you today with us. I always like to, before I start in kind of the line of questions, ask people a little bit about their, their background um, in terms of dementia. I mentioned in the intro that your grandparents, you know, both lived with dementia. And if you want to share a little bit about their story, or if there's any others in your family or circle of friends uh, that have dealt with it. Sure. Um, so both of my grandparents had dementia. Um, my grandma initially, um, she was first diagnosed with it. And um, it was a case where um, my grandparents were farmers up in the Pine City area. So north of the Twin Cities. And um, I have a lot of very um, close knit family that live near my grandparents. Um, and they spent a lot of time with them. And, and um, they were kind of telling me that my grandparents were starting or my grandma was starting to show signs of dementia. And I would come up and I was having these really amazing conversations with her. And um, it was about my childhood and her childhood and, and stuff like that. And, and uh, I would say, what, you know, what are you talking about? And uh, it turns out that she, she did have dementia, but it was, you know, her short-term memory was starting to go and, and I just didn't realize it. So um, my grandma had vascular dementia and um, I was extremely close to her. And um, my, both my grandparents were just an absolute godsend to our family. And um, my grandma, uh, she, she ended up progressing fairly quickly. And um, my, uh, my family kind of looked around at places um, that they were um, interested in maybe bringing her and nothing was good enough for my, my grandparents, for my grandma. Um, and so my family opted. Um, initially, she stayed in her home and my family would care for her. We would take care of her round the clock, come in and help out um, with things. My grandpa, he was still okay at the time. And um, she ended up getting to the point where she moved in with my sister who just lived right down the road from, from my grandparents' house. So, um, and then family would, would help as well um, at that time. But um, it was, it was a struggle. Um, and after she passed away, then my grandpa, he also ended up with dementia. His wasn't quite as significant as my grandma's, but um, it was, it was a lot for my family to deal with. So um, they were really an inspiration in us, us actually building Atlas Villas Memory Care. Wow. Well, and it, it's common, you know, more common than people realize when one person has it and maybe when someone passes, the other one gets it. And yep. I, you, know, you kind of wonder, is it the loss and the grief and the isolation, all of those things that really trigger that to amp up, you know, because yeah. we know stress increases symptoms in people with dementia. That's really evident. And I, yeah. you know, I'd love to see a study done on that um, for a little bit more, more detail, because it is, I think, very, very common. That would be really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, my, my, uh, my grandpa, he had just a brilliant mind. Um, he, he actually didn't complete school. He, he dropped out of school when he was like, I think 14 years old um, to help his family work because he grew up, um, he was born in 1929. And um, he, he just had this amazing mind. I mean, he, I would talk to him about history subjects and stuff forever. So it was, he, he was able to maintain a lot of that until, you know, the very end, he, he living into his nineties. So, Why? but yeah, um, I, I think it was, it was difficult for, um, difficult for him when my grandma passed away for sure. Okay. 
Right. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about the story behind, you know, Atlas Villas. You know, you had mentioned that it was kind of triggered by your family's experience and stuff. So, I mean, it's a big step to say we're going to do this. I mean, this is not a little task by any stretch of the imagination. So how did that all come into play for you? Um, well, there's a, a couple of reasons. We decided back in around 2016, 2017, my husband and I decided that we really wanted to um, provide a, a really wonderful place for um, families and, and their loved ones suffering from um, memory issues. And so um, we initially, we were looking at purchasing an existing property and it ended up not working out for us. And, and we really looked at what we wanted to do. And we um, really wanted to build a facility that really was um, geared towards people with memory issues. And we felt like the best course of action would be to build it from the ground up. So um, we, we started designing it and we went through the process of, of um, we drew it out and brought it to an architect and had them um, draw up all the architectural plans. And we had to go through the city and, and deal with all the permits and everything. Um, but we were finally able to bring it to life and we were able to open um, just this March. So, well, and I love that you guys' background is property management and stuff too. Yeah. So you, it's not like you were totally fresh, you know, I mean, you yeah. were fresh into the industry, but you yeah. still knew what, you know, what a building needed, what it required and uh, yes. the flow of things in terms yeah. of natural response. What did the rest of the family think about you guys, you and Rick, um, endeavoring into the, the deep dive of this? Uh, yeah, I, I think they thought we were a little crazy at first, but um, <laughs> I, they've been very supportive. It's, it's, it's been pretty awesome. Um, it, it's been particularly fun. We have, um, we have seven children between us. And so it's been really fun to bring the kids over during the building process and, and really see it come to life and, and have them be, they're actually pretty proud of us, which is, which is pretty cool. So that's nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, regarding the building of this facility, I was actually just talking to our RN yesterday. Um, Rick and I actually met um, back a long time ago. Um, he and I were both in school for nursing and we actually met in a school um, setting where we were doing a caregiving class together. So um, he ended up, uh, he had a business prior to that and he ended up keeping his business and not going into nursing. And I ended up in property management, but um, we we do have that history together. So it was, it was kind of funny to um, open this building and it kind of felt like everything kind of came full circle for us. So. Wow. That is really interesting. Now, yeah. do, your, do your kids visit now with, with, you know, now that you've got residents in and things like that? Are they going to be yeah. in the community? Yep. Yep. Um, we have a seven-year-old who loves to come over and, and visit with the residents. He was just here yesterday and uh, they absolutely love, love having him visits and um, the older kids um, I'm going to, we're still kind of figuring things out with regards to roles and everything, but we're going to find um, some sort of role for them to, to come over here. They're teenagers so they can come over and do something for a little extra money over here as well. So. Oh, that's neat. There's, yeah. you know, there, there are some, some organizations and stuff too, that really are, you know, for kids. Um, there's uh, kid caregivers uh, there and there's puzzles to remember. If you ever want puzzles or something, they'll, they'll donate them and send them over. Okay. Them. And then there's, you know, this is more for, for kids, but you might run into families dealing with this um, too. Uh, where a, a child has a parent with dementia and, and a child is, I think, 30 and under is how they, they categorize that. But okay. Lorenzo's house does a lot of um, online stuff. In fact, they have a big conference coming up this June because it's, it's an area that's really missed for kids to truly understand. What's yes, I, stuff. I actually saw your, um, the, the stuff that you've done on Lorenzo's house recently. And that, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's a really great, great thing that's that's out there. So yeah, it's definitely, um, it's, it's been good, um, especially for my seven-year-old to come over and, you know, he, he hasn't experienced anyone in his life, um, with memory loss to mm -hmm. the degree that some of our residents have. So it, it's been a good experience for him. Yeah. It can really be life-changing compassion and just that engagement. They don't see, I, they just see things very different than what we see too. And that's good for everybody. I think. Right? Yes. Um, one of the things that I'm always curious about, because it seems like everyone who steps into this sees very specific things that are missing. 
the industry. Do you mind sharing what you saw, like when you were probably looking for your for your grandma for a place? You know, what was missing? What did you want to do different? Um, well, one thing that we wanted to do different is um, there are a lot of facilities that have a combined assisted living and memory care. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to just focus on memory care for a number of reasons. I feel like you have the potential to do a much better job if you're just focusing on on that need. Um, so our building is entirely geared towards um, memory care. So with the exception of the office and the kitchen, the residents are able to go throughout our our entire community and be safe. So um, it's a secured building and we have an enclosed patio area and um, we have a movie theater and, and just different things. Um, and they're able to just wander around and, and we know that they're safe where they go. We also, um, when we were hiring our caregivers, they're aware that they're coming in to work in memory care. A lot of places that have a combined assisted living and memory care, they'll hire people in the assisted living um, area and then they have to go work in memory care and they're not, might not really want to do it because they thought that they were going to be working in assisted living. So mm -hmm. our caregivers are aware of, of what they're getting into when we hire them. And there are other things um, within our building, aside from it being secured, we have um, implemented things such as we have a curved sky ceiling um, and we have lighting in the building that changes throughout the day. So we have a sunrise every morning, a sunset every evening. And um, we have before uh, meals, we have a rain shower that takes place. So it's not actually rain, but <laughs> um, the sky dims and you hear a rain sound. And, and we have a really amazing lighting program in place that makes adjustments to all of the street lights, the porch lights, the sky, all of it works together. It, it's all integrated to work together to kind of portray the time of day, um, which is really, we've, we've witnessed that it's, it's very much helping with our residents with sundowners. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, that was really impressive. You know, I know walking into your community just looks so different just from the get go. I mean, it's, you know, from the outside, it looks like, you know, uh, a, a smaller community. And, and yep. how many beds are you there again? Is it 16? Uh, 16. Yep. Okay. And so from the footprint outside, you know, you kind of think, oh, it's going to look like something else. And you walk in and, and instantly you're like, wow, this is really, <laughs> really different, you know, and, and yeah. it's, it's neat to learn and understand why you've made, why you've made those changes and things. So I'm going to just take a, a quick break here real quick. Sure. Um, I want our, I want our audience to know we're talking with um, Amber Ganyan and she is the owner of Atlas Villas Memory Care in Minnesota here. So make sure that you go and check them out at atlasvillamemorycare.com. And if you prefer to talk to them by phone, you can actually do that and not have to push 42 buttons, you know, and, and go through the automated thing at 612-219-2111. And um, if you, you know, are hopping on right now, you're going to want to rewind and just kind of hear that history of, you know, how, how things came to be. I think you'll find it really, really interesting. Now, Amber, you had mentioned, you know, that your, your seven-year-old, you know, comes up and kind of volunteers and, and hangs out, you know, with, with the residents and, yep. and um, you're, you're trying to kind of figure out a footprint for all the kids, you know, to be, to be part. Do you allow, allow other outsiders to come in and, and volunteer? We actually do. Um, one of our caregivers, she has a son with Down syndrome and um, he enjoys coming in volunteering. I believe he comes in twice a week right now. He's actually here right now. Um, and he does a really great job. So um, we're absolutely, we love having volunteers come in. Um, we have a couple of um, girls that are in high school that um, I was just talking with um, our activities director. He knows um, some families and their daughters are interested in volunteering um, and coming in on the weekends to help with activities. So after school's out, they're going to come in and start doing that as well this summer. So, so oh. yeah, we, we definitely love having volunteers. Oh, neat. That's something I need to get more of with my business. I'd love to get kids involved, even just yeah. like with the, the editing of videos and just kind of pulling them into the conversation to be able to see, see different things. But I, I haven't reached out yet to the schools and I, I need to do that before, before school ends, you know, I'm, I probably will miss this opportunity, but yeah, um, but yeah, yeah it, it's awesome to get the youth involved. It definitely yeah. is fun. 
Well, and they're so, they're so smart um, and they've got great ideas. You know, they, yep. again, they look through things through a different window. And I think that's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Now yeah. I want to ask you about, you know, memory care. You had mentioned you guys chose just to do memory care. So you can be really specific. Everybody's on the same page when it comes from, from training to know what the job is and who you're going to yep. be involved with and things like that. Um, yep. Do you feel that there's more need for memory care these days than yes. there than there has been in the past? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, with with the baby boomer generation getting older, um, that that's one factor, and and um, you just it, it's just more prevalent. Mm -hmm. um, you, it seems like everyone I talk to is touched in some way by someone with with memory issues. Um, it's it's very common. Um, when we talked earlier about um, you no know, having other people, you know, in my life, I actually my dad, all of his siblings have memory issues. Um, they have they have dementia and they're in their seventies. Um, so, wow. yeah, yeah, he has three siblings, um, and um, he hasn't he hasn't shown any signs of it. He's the second oldest, but um, he's he's concerned about it definitely. So. Um, but yeah, it's, there's a, there's a lot of people that I know that are, that have people in their lives that, that are suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's. So, you know, it's interesting when you're talking about your dad's side, there's a lot of times, you know, the researchers will say, well, you know, hereditary, it really isn't that common, but when you actually talk with families, it's mm -hmm. a lot, it's a lot more common. I think research hasn't caught up with a lot of these families. They weren't asking the right questions or haven't been to really yes. gather that information. Um, For sure. And and, I, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say with my, uh, my dad, his parents passed away quite young. So mm -hmm. I, I think that it would have been too early for them to have possibly, you know, shown, shown the signs. So, um, but I agree. I think that they're not looking into the hereditary factor as much yeah. as they should be. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. What's, um, when it comes to memory care, you know, there's, there's all different types of kind of models and stuff out there. And like I said, you, you've chosen to really stand out and be, and be different, um, which I think is a good thing. I think, uh, I think change is always good. I, I think people will be really, really impressed just taking a tour and you have a video clip that people can watch as well. Yes. Uh, okay. So Amber, one of the things that I want to mention to our audience is that we do have a link where you were interviewed and yes. people can actually, you know, get a virtual peek at yes. how you're different um, on there. So I would really recommend people click through to that. It's something that we can't upload because it was, you know, through a, through a news channel. I wanted to also ask you about why you decided to focus on creating a, the smaller model. You know, we see these big, humongous buildings all over the place. And like you said, you know, they have market rate, they have assisted living, you know, they have all yeah. these layers of care. Um, and some of them are continuums of care, depending on how they're designed. Why did you decide just to, to do a smaller community? Well, first of all, we really wanted it to feel like they're, the residents are at home. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want them to feel like they're in a hospital. We wanted it to feel like a residential um, community versus an institutional um, building. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the main reasons. But we've also found their, the care that they're receiving it is so good. Mm -hmm. um, our, we're also staffed very well. We um, Currently, we have seven residents in the building and we have two staff members on um, our AM and PM shift and then one overnight. When we're full, we're planning on having three caregivers on AMs and PMs and two overnight. So um, we're, we're staffing appropriately. So everyone's receiving the, the care that they need. But because our building is also so small, we're able to keep an eye on everybody all the time. So the caregivers are always um, in the morning, they get everyone up. And they really encourage them to come out and socialize. And um, we have a couple of, of recent people that moved in that aren't as keen on socializing, but they'll still come out and, and they'll give it a shot. And for the most part, our residents will be out in the common areas um, socializing for the vast majority of the day. Um, and if someone you know, has gone back to their room, the caregivers, it's small enough that they're, they'll wonder, where did that person go? You know, is something going on with them? Um, we really, um, 
we just, we, we really want people to re- to receive the care that they deserve. And I feel like with the larger facilities, a lot of people end up falling through the cracks. Well, I think one of the things that's nice too with the smaller communities is you don't have this influx of so many different staff. I mean, you're, you're actually able to build some relationships with people, which to me is massive because then it gets to, you get to the core of how are people feeling, you know? And like you said, there's some people that don't like to socialize and you know, they have that right too. And I think sometimes they get forced to be in an atmosphere they're just not comfortable with. And, and, and sometimes I think we have to train staff and families both on why that's okay. I mean, if they're in isolation and they're depressed, that's a whole different thing than if they're, you know, just very content and this is, they, they like their quiet, but I love, you know, every one of your, um, rooms has has this front porch you know with a it's like a park bench and then you have you know the clouds and stuff that you see in the ceiling the curved ceiling and the lighting and stuff change so you feel like you're kind of outside in a park and and there's kind of this mix of community and and you can sit and observe you know I mean that's one of my favorite things to do at the state fair sit on a bench and, and just watching the crowd you know yeah, exactly um, and, uh, you know, or if you're at a beach or wherever, I mean, just, you yeah. can, it's, it's okay, you know, yep. To, yep. to observe that doesn't mean that they're not engaged. They're just engaged yep. at a different level. That's true. Yep. Everybody, everybody's different. And some people are more social butterflies and other people like to kind of, you know, have, have time to recharge. And actually I, I'm very similar that I, I really, I love talking to people, but I need a little bit of downtime sometimes too. So, you know, everybody's, everybody's different. So we're trying to accommodate all different kinds of people that live here. So. Yeah. Oh, I, and I'm like that too. I remember when I was younger, I would go up to the lake all by myself and p- for like a week and people are like, yeah. well, bring your friends. And I'm like, I really don't want, I just want to go out on the boat and, yeah. you know, fish and uh, suntan and jump in and yeah. just be on my own schedule, you know, cause I was, I, I was, I was always really, really busy. And, yeah. um, but I, I love just kind of having that me time yeah. and, and really, it, it really energized me actually to kind of yeah. re-enter the craziness. And when I, when I come back, if it was, you know, if I was 16 or 30 or 50 or whatever age, um, yeah. that's always been really important to me. And I think that that's something that, you know, we have to realize would we want, would we want to be forced to have yeah. to do something if that really isn't our personality yep. and and you know even like with the quality you know assurance when they come in from the state and stuff i mean just documenting this is who the person is we're honoring that you yep. know they are yep. happy they are content and and to me those really need to be our priorities versus you know how many activities did they attend and and yes. all of that kind of stuff you know that's so true yep yep it's, it's very important. And, and we're really trying to customize the care for, for all the residents mm-hmm. because they are, they're all very different. So yeah. um, we want them all to have the best possible experience living here. Yeah. And, and they come, you know, they'll engage at different modes. Some people kind of sit out and kind of observe to see if it's safe. Change is hard. And that's a big change moving out of your home into, you know, where you've, you've had all this private time, but then you also see people just blossom too, who have been kind of isolated at their home. And, and they, you know, I saw that when I was in real estate where they would say, you know, Oh no, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know? And then they didn't even realize how much they missed the socialization because it was kind of a slow process. Yeah. Maybe if they stopped driving or friends passed or moved or, you know, all of those, all those little bits and pieces. And then all of a sudden, boy, they're in the thick of it and having the time of their lives. Yeah. And, and yeah. So it's fun to see too. It is. It, it's been really fun. We've, we've had a number of people that have, have actually been in the um, situation you described where mm-hmm. they were either living at home by themselves or they were in a facility where they were never leaving their rooms, um, mm-hmm. unfortunately. And, and they've come here and, and they're thriving. They're doing really well. Oh, that's neat. Now I would imagine too, and, and I mean, I've seen this work in, in other size communities too, but I, I think it's just a little bit more difficult when you've got s- such a big mix, but um, 
I would think in a community like yours, there's going to be more family connection to when they visit. And there is. for me, that was always a big plus too, because that I had peers as well, because a lot of people, you know, weren't dealing with this and didn't understand it. And so you could kind of have some conversations that you couldn't, you know, you could try to have them with, with friends and sometimes even your own family, but the ones that didn't visit really didn't get it really aren't involved. Are you seeing some of that happening too? So, so we are seeing a lot of family involvement here. Um, we don't have visiting hours. Um, family is encouraged to come and visit when they'd like to see their family members. So um, we, we encourage them to come for meals. Um, we encourage them. A, a lot of our families will come in and take their family out, you know, for the day or, or bring them to, um, you know, we I don't know. We we it was really cute yesterday. We had one of our residents, a really good friend of his, came and and picked him up and brought him to lunch. So we really encourage friends and family to come and visit because it it only helps the residents. We want them to be here, engaged with with their family members. So so you know, for families, do they have like a like a key fob, or do they have to press a code, or do is it staff only lets them in? How does it work for your community? So our community. Um, there's several things. So our community, they're not given a fob um, just because we've heard of a lot of um, situations where people will inadvertently um, let someone out that is a resident. They'll say, oh, I'm leaving too. And they don't realize that person's supposed to be staying. And, and we do have um, a couple of people that like to wander a little bit. So we want to be on the safe side. So um, they, we have a, a ring doorbell. And so they push the ring doorbell and it goes to um, the tablets that our caregivers chart on. And then it also goes to the computers in the office. So you can actually see the person that's at the door and communicate with them. And then you're able to let them in with the fob. Um, our our facility is a little bit different where um, we have utilized a lot of technology here. And um, we, we another additional thing, um, we, we have cameras throughout our, our building um, on top of the, the ring doorbell system. So um, I'm not really sure how to go into that, but sorry. Okay. <laughs> that make a lot of sense. <laughs> so are there, uh, so are there cameras like in their, in their um, rooms and yeah. in the bathrooms too, or? There are no cameras in bathrooms. So we do not have cameras in, we have a spa um, that has a walk-in tub and a chair, um, a hairstylist comes in and cuts hair. We don't have a camera in there because of the privacy with, with the bathtub. And then all of the bathrooms, there's no cameras, but we do have them in all of the bedrooms and we have them throughout the facility and, and outside of the faci- outside of the facility as well um, in case an elopement were to take place. So okay. we have three, three in total and we can add additional if we need to. Okay. Well, that's nice. And I, and I like that you're not giving out the fobs to the families because again, one, they can let people out, but they've been misused in, in some situations too, where people have gone in and stolen things. And I mean, there's yeah. other, people get creative, you know, when, yeah. <laughs> when they're on the wrong side of the track sometimes and in terms yeah. of how they're going to take advantage of stuff. So um, that's another, I think, big, big plus there. What about, you know, you talked about ratio, what about staff training and things? Are you doing anything different there? So um, with regards to training of um, incoming staff, we have, um, two part-time RNs who work together very well. They're very experienced and very knowledgeable and they work with the caregivers, um, for several days, um, to train them on, um, how we do things, all of our policies and procedures, and, um, they will train them on competencies and med administration and things like that. And then, um, they'll work alongside our current caregivers, um, for about a week to be able to shadow them and, and learn the ropes of our, our building and, and learn about the different residents. Okay. So what about families? Do you do anything to support them or do any training for them? We're in the process of, of implementing some training um, and support groups as well. We're going to be holding a, a family and resident council meeting um, on a monthly basis here so that families are able to get together and, and talk about things. Um, there's another um, local assisted living memory care where I, I've spoken with them about possibly collaborating with them as well to hold um, like a joint family support group um, mm-hmm. and maybe take turns hosting at our, our different buildings as well. Oh, nice. so, yeah. Well, that's good. I think collaborations are good. 
Now, the last question I, I want to ask you is has to do with kind of the labeling of behaviors, um, yeah. which I, you know, I mean, it, it's a it's a term we all use, but I, yeah. I would love to see us kind of get rid of that term too, because it's such a negative one. It really uh, is. Yeah. Because it really is, you know, when they're acting out, it really is a clue or a reaction to tell us something's, something's off. Yeah. You know? And sure. so if we use that term behavior, you know, people literally, and I'm, some of our audience might not know this, but they get labeled and that kind of carries on from yep. one place to another. So if someone is acting out, might be physical aggression or sexual, or I mean, they're verbal, it could be all kinds of different things. Yep. How, how do you guys handle, you know, those situations or, or do you feel they don't come up as much in a smaller community? They do come up definitely. Um, so with regards to, um, with behaviors or, or acting out, um, our staff is really trained, um, in redirecting the residents. So we try everything, um, you know, possible to, to redirect them. Um, a lot of times it's just a frustration, um, with, with their situation. And, and so we need to be, um, we need to be very caring and we need to be compassionate and understand that, it, it's very scary for them and it can be hard. And um, one of the things that we really work on teaching our staff and, and um, even other residents, we have, we have some residents that are um, more beginning stages of dementia and some that are a little bit further um, and, and they'll kind of try and correct some of the residents if, mm -hmm. you know, they, they may think that um, they're, you know, they're at work today, not, they're not living here and, and, um, and they think they need to get to work. And, and some of our, uh, more beginning stages residents will try and correct them and, and it really frustrates them. And so uh, we kind of have to intervene and explain, you know, no, it's okay. You know, and you really have to step into their world. Um, Cause it, it's, it is, it's very scary. And, and I can't imagine, you know, how frightening it must be when, when people are, are going through, through these memory issues, because um, you know, your, your world is, you're very disoriented. And, and um, so we, we really trained, trained our staff to, to work with, with them and, and uh, try and calm them and, and have them feel better. I know in some communities, you know, if someone thinks that they have to go to work, like one gentleman worked maintenance. So they, they gave him a job every, every day to check the light bulbs and make sure nothing was burnt out and his, yes. his job then to report it, to get changed. Or if somebody was a nurse, um, giving them a clipboard, yeah. or, you know, we to turn around. Yes. And we, we actually, we do do that here. Um, I, I can't, you know, divulge too much about yep. residents with privacy, but we do have someone who, um, she worked in an office setting. And, uh, so we, we have come up with, with ideas, um, so that she does feel like she's at work. Yep. Um, so, you know, we can't just give her people's paperwork because of HIPAA, yeah. um, but, but we've, we've created a system, um, of, of basically, um, false like documents that don't actually exist for her to file and, and, and work with. Yeah. Um, so it, because it work, you know, work is a very important part of our lives and, and it's still, it's an important part of their lives still. And, and so, yeah, they, we, we have another resident who, um, she did a lot of, um, like, like domestic type things when she was younger. And so, um, she likes to help us. So she'll, she'll help with, um, like folding laundry and, and folding towels and things like that. So we really try and find things, um, that, that they can really, um, feel good about doing and, um, you know, kind of gives them a purpose as well. Yeah. I've seen in some uh, larger communities where they'll have like actual stations. So they'll have like a, a towel folding one. And then yeah. there, there's another one where they'll have a setup for a baby in a crib and take yeah. that because some people, you know, like to carry the baby dolls and they're so yeah. real nowadays. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I've yeah. seen um, sections for even hanging up clothes with the clothespins, which, you know, yep. not too many people do anymore, but that was a thing that they did. And another station somebody did with, um, it, it was really more for getting ready in the morning with a mirror and um, old brushes and, um, and combs. And I'm not quite sure how they did that hygiene wise, you know, because yeah. You, that one, I think you'd have to be a, a little more careful with and stuff, but there's all kinds of creative, creative ways to, really is. to be able to, to engage and give people purpose. And I, I know when my mom, she was in a, in a nursing home, a pretty large community and, you know, she had her group of friends and every time I would come in there, 
my mom would say, oh, and, and she would, she would look at me and go, and there's my mother. And she takes such good care of me and oh. her, her friends would let it fly. But there yeah. was one gal that wasn't part of their clique. And so you can't get clicks, you know, if yeah. you merge or don't. And yeah. the, the one woman would go, Dorothy, that's not your mother. And she'd scream out at my mom and my mom um, was in the stage where she knew she had dementia and she didn't really care. And she's like, ah, I've got <laughs> Alzheimer's. And then her whole group would just tackle and have fun. Yeah. But that yeah. was just every single day, you know, oh that was just part of the process and stuff. Yeah. No yeah. one was getting hurt by it. You know, the one was frustrated, but yet she didn't want to be part of the group. Yeah. You know? And she was, it, it was almost like she was trying to break them apart. Um, okay. But I think she had denial, most likely what she was dealing yeah. with. And, you know, she was struggling to kind of reclaim, you know, what her reality was, and it just didn't mesh all the time. And yeah, and stuff. but it wasn't, um, it, you know, it never got aggressive or anything like that. It was just one of those things that pass. And yep. And we all have that in our world. If we've got to mentor, or not, you know, we have to adjust it. You can't, you can't control everything. And I think that's something that family and staff and everybody have to understand. You can, you can do the best you can do, but um, you know, every situation is different. Every group of people is going to be different again, yep. dementia or not with that. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, social dynamics at play and yep. You're going to have it no matter where you are. And we we've seen a little bit of that here as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's, it's definitely easier to um, get a handle on when, um, you have a smaller group of people, but um, yeah, we, we found ways, we found ways to make it good for everybody. So. Yeah. Now you had mentioned, you know, you've got the spa and kind of how that works, which is a, a beautiful setting. You want to tell people a little bit about your theater, because I, I found that really interesting too, because a lot of times people will say a theater room and it'll have a, a screen that maybe rolls down. And some of the theaters just have a couple of TVs, you know, posted too, but um, that's not what yours is. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually sitting in our theater room right now. <laughs> um, we, we have, um, we have, I cannot tell you, my husband would be able to tell you, I believe it's four. I want to say 75 inch TVs that we've merged together. So we have one full picture. Um, it, it truly looks like a movie theater, um, in here we have movie theater seating. So we have um, fully reclinable, very comfortable, like you see in like the updated movie theaters with the the tray for their popcorn and, and cup holders and backlighting and, and all of that stuff. And um, so it's a really comfortable, comfortable movie theater. And so we show movies in here a couple of times a week, at least, um, which has been really fun. But we also use it as what we call a virtual room. So when we don't have movies playing, we have a scene playing. Um, We have 12 different scenes right now that we can choose from. So we've got a golf course, we've got Washington, D.C., we've got Paris, we've got, um, right now we have uh, Hawaii, and then we have a tour of the um, Pearl Harbor as well. That's the scene that we have playing right now. So we have a bunch of different scenes. So when movies aren't playing, we have those scenes playing in here. So you can kind of come in here and get away for a little while. Maybe it's a place that someone's visited before or a place that they haven't been, but it's actually really fun um, just to come in. I'll come in here and just sit for a while and, and watch it. And um, we have scents that go with each scene as well. So we have um, a scent machine that um, releases the scents that I've paired with each scene. So we have like fresh cut grass for the golf scene. We've got a mountain air smell for downhill skiing. We have the actual scent from the Bellagio for the Las Vegas scene. So um, we really want, you know, to have, a you know, a really pull all of the senses when, when you're in this room um, with these scenes. So it, it's, it's really fun. I, when we had, um, I've never been to Paris. I'm too, I don't like flying on planes, so I'm too afraid to fly to Europe because it'll take too long to be on a plane. So I haven't been there before, but um, we had uh, Paris on the other day and they had uh, the Eiffel tower and that was really cool. So it feels like you're, you're walking up to the Eiffel tower and then you get on an elevator and right all the way to the top. And then you're looking down over Paris and, and it's really cool. Um, when we first opened, we had two ladies who used to visit Washington DC a lot. So we put that on and it was the cutest thing. Um, I actually took a video of them because I was standing in the doorway watching them. And, and uh, one of them was like, it was the, the video was um, they were like, 
going down this street and you could see all of the cherry blossoms like at the, on the side and and she's like I think I'm moving I think I'm moving am I moving I'm not moving am I moving because it's it's so realistic <laughs> um, I, I just loved it I got such a kick out of it but they really enjoyed it so it's just a nice place to come and get away for a while we have that and then this room also is our storm shelter as well so um, we wanted a place to bring everyone that would be safe so we have uh, concrete really thick concrete walls and ceiling um, in this this room. So if there was like a tornado or any kind of nasty storm, we'd be able to bring everybody in here and be safe. Which is really nice. People don't really think about that in a lot of the other communities. Yes. Where do, where do people go? Now, even your, your kitchen design is very different. Thank um, you. Compared to most, I was like, oh, this is different. So, I mean, you guys have really put in a lot of thought in terms of what you what you've built and your your patio is absolutely gorgeous you know so and that's all fenced in and enclosed now can people go in and out uh, on their own or does that have to be monitored by staff yep so um the doors if it's a nice day out Mm -hmm. um we'll leave the doors unlocked so they can come in and out as they please the patio i i love the patio so much um we picked this piece of land to build Um, our first building here because we live five minutes away and also it's in a residential area um, in the back so when you're looking out the back you see this this really nice looking pond with we get some wildlife and stuff back there and people's homes and it's just a beautiful setting and the residents absolutely love it Um, so on the nicer days we do keep the doors unlocked if it's like raining or during the winter if it's cold we'll lock them so that they can't just go in and out but on the nice days we keep them unlocked okay Okay. Well, in the way you are situated, it's kind of like a, a long haul with, yep. with the room. So, I mean, it's really easy to see who's out and active and who's in their rooms. And, you know, it's just a nice, easy way to monitor. You also have, when you walk in, you've got a couple of, uh, you know, you've got a seating area and then you've got a couple of big screen TVs and stuff. Um, yep. posted there. Can you, can you tell how that space is utilized? Cause I think that's different too, how you structured things. Yeah. Um, so when you first walk in, um, we have, it, it's our dining area, but a lot of our activities are done in that area as well. So it's very open. Um, we really wanted the building to be very open and inviting. Um, a lot of memory care units are, you kind of feel like you're being locked away. And so we wanted an open environment. So it, it's a very open area. Um, we have a full-time activities director here. He's awesome. His name's Tim. And so he's, he does activities with the residents throughout the day. Um, and then we have, um, so we have two TVs. We have one that it's, it's really funny. A lot of our residents are huge sports fans. And so we have a lot of twins games going lately on that TV. Um, they also like to watch some soap operas and different things like that as well. Um, Tim can't get started with activities in the morning until the price is right is over. That's a big hit. So everybody <laughs> watch the price is right. Um, and then below that we have a, a virtual fish tank. So it's basically a, it's a TV, um, but it's a fish, it's a fish tank. So, um, fish are supposed to promote overall wellness and encourage eating in people with memory issues. So we put that in the dining room and we didn't want to deal with the bacteria and upkeep of an actual fish tank. So, um, we have, we have this virtual fish tank in that area. And then when you walk around to the other side, um, it's our living area, Mm -hmm. And um, people will spend a lot of time in there as well. Um, And it's overlooking our patio. So there's a view of of the pond from the living area as well. And and there we have another TV and then we have a virtual fireplace underneath that TV to avoid any burns or anything. So, yeah. And that's a beautiful section too. And just a beautiful view. Um, Really, really comfortable, comfortable layout. You said you used a lot of technology. Do I remember when I was there, did I hear birds tweeting and stuff too? Okay. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> we have, uh, we have birds. So um, it was, it was kind of interesting. So we, we have morning birds and afternoon birds, and then overnight we have crickets. And then you hear the rain sound during those rain shower periods that I was talking about. But um, it was, it was funny because one of our first residents, when she moved in, she could hear the birds mm-hmm. and she, she did think they were real. And she was very concerned that they were going to fly into her room. Mm-hmm. So we had to explain to her, no, it's okay. You know, they're, they're put away. It's okay. But it, it does sound like you're outside when you're inside. And, and we really, like I said, we wanted to have that open environment 
um, for, for the residents here. So a lot of people will describe our building as feeling a little bit like Las Vegas when they walk in, which is, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, it, but it's very calming, you know, it's just a, yeah. a really, I, I don't know. I found it really peaceful. Thank um, you. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you don't always say that when you're walking into a community, you know, it's, yeah. it's just a very, it was very peaceful, peaceful setting and everything. Um, I don't know the, the smaller communities. I just think it's so easy for people to connect. And I know a lot of the bigger communities, I mean, they close off their, their memory care, but it's still, it's a different sense that you are, because you're walking in off the street versus going through um, different levels of care to get into the memory care, you know, it yes. just, it feels different. Um, yep. And, and we, that's something that we've heard from a lot of families that have toured. They've come from a place where they did have to walk through an assisted living to get mm -hmm. to the locked memory care unit. And they said it was really refreshing to be able to just come in off the street and walk into the memory care because yeah. it, it, they felt like their family would be, you know, in a sense, kind of locked away, you know, in, in that unit beyond the assisted living. So. Unconsciously, it kind of forces family to physically walk through that loss again of this is where they were or where they, you know, used to live. And now they're here and yep. you don't, you don't have that. You just walk in and it's, it's bright and it's cheery and engaging and, yeah. Um, and things. Uh, it, it's, it's one of those little things that can make a big difference. You don't even know what makes a big difference until you walk into a community like yours. Yeah. It's, it, and it, it, it's, it's fun to see people's reaction. Um, like, like you were saying earlier, it, it looks just like a simple, like average building. And then when you open the door, it's, it's something else. And it's really fun to see people's reactions when they walk in. So. Yeah. It kind of reminded me, and this is going to sound weird, but you know, those greeting cards, when you open them up and they pop up, <laughs> That's yeah. kind of what it was like, because it was just something totally I wasn't expecting, you know, yep. Yep. but it was just like, oh, this is cool. You yeah, know? <laughs> I can definitely see, I can see where, yes, where the comparison would be there for sure. Yeah. Well, Amber, this has just been such a joy to talk to you. I'm, I'm so excited. I actually heard about your community through um, one of my members of my memory cafe who said, oh, wow. have you ever, have you ever heard about this? And I'm like, no, I'm not aware of this one. And so then I called you right away, you know, to do yep. the tour. So, um, I was, I was so thrilled to get those connections and to be able to meet you and, and learn more about your, your community there. Um, I'm hoping that our listeners will like click and share and be a giver of hope. You know, we need to share knowledge. It's nice that you're listening and you're watching and all of that, but other people need to know even other people, uh, you know, could be out of the country or whatever, but they're going to be inspired by this type of memory care and, and the thought that they've put into it and the difference it can make on, on other levels and stuff. So, you know, none of us know when dementia is going to knock on our door and maybe it'll never knock on our door, but chances are it's going to knock on a friend's door and they're going to need the information. So we need to make this a comfortable access for people. And so it'll just take you seconds, you know, to like, click and share, put it out to your sphere. You'll probably be surprised if somebody who will react to it, that you had no idea was dealing with this, because again, it's not something we openly talk about. And that's, a, that's really difficult for families. So we just have to make it easier. So again, be a giver of hope, join the cause, um, make a difference, uh, big or small, it doesn't make any difference. And if you're interested in you know, having a tour, reach out to them at atlasvillasmemorycare.com. You can also find them on Facebook. Um, they are located at 1825 Main Street, Centerville, Minnesota. And you're going to want to set up an appointment, before, you know, not just come to the door because uh, there's a lot going on. Um, so I, would, I would imagine you would prefer people making an appointment. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I like to provide the tours in person and I'm not always at the building. Um, we do live just a few minutes away. So if someone did show up, we can come over. But it, it's just nice to know in advance because we do have we do have a lot of stuff going on here, activities and things. And and I like to be here. Sure. And then they can all also call, which is uh, 612 uh, 219 uh, 2111. So again, thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate you joining us today. 
And uh, again, feel free to check out alzheimerspeaks.com. We have lots of free uh, educational resources and more there. Thanks again, Amber. Thanks, Lori. Yep. Have a good week, everyone. Bye-bye.